Are you thinking about buying a Kaleidoscape and you want to see what it's all about and how it works? Let's take a look. All right, so here we are. Let's take a deep dive through the Kaleidoscape UI, the menus, the playback system. Now, if you're looking for detailed information about settings and options and configuration, I did do a, a separate video on that previously. It's available here on the channel, of course. And going forward, look for some more videos because I will be talking about the awesome mobile apps and the web page and some of the other elements of, of having a movie library in and using the Kaleidoscape system. So this time though, we're gonna keep this focus just on the, the general playback UI, the interface UI, and what it's like to use it to have your movie collection and watch your movies and so on. So I should note that I am recording this uh, in my living room. This is the Kaleidoscape running on my 85 inch Sony X900 HTV. It's not generally, of course, where we use it, but I do have access to it with my Zone 2 setup. Normally we're using the Kaleidoscape in our theater room on the JVC NX7 projector. So let's go right in. So right off the bat, this is what you get. The Kaleidoscape really kind of is the movie wall. The movie wall is the DNA of the whole platform. And so we are greeted here by kind of this grid pattern, nice sized movie posters, good quality overall, I would say, in the movie posters themselves. Although I think they could be a little higher res. They don't look bad. They look quite nice. You'll see a lot of the design language of the Kaleidoscape evokes the blues and the yellows. So we have kind of the blue pop-up cards in the yellow border around the currently selected movie. And we're looking at about well three rows of movies plus a little bit of extension into the fourth row and seven across with again a little extension kind of showing uh, off the left and the right hand sides. So I can move around this whole UI up and down. It's very smooth scrolling so much so that it kind of almost makes you a little dizzy if you uh, if you go straight through there and, and, and you're watching it, especially on a big screen. But a couple of things to note is that it doesn't necessarily have a definitive start and nor does it have really a definitive end. You can effectively scroll through your movies horizontally from the beginning of the alphabet to the end and it'll just wrap naturally right around. And the same goes for the up and down. Although the, I, I guess I don't fully have a, a, a calculation for the understanding of like how many movies does it go off to the right before it decides to go down? But you can see the jump is pretty wide. So we're looking at Birds of Prey over there on the right, but the next row starts with Encanto and between Birds of Prey and Encanto, we have, what was that? Probably at least a dozen or so movies. So when you're jumping down, you're not jumping by letter, you're, you're jumping a pretty, a pretty decent uh, count overall of the movies themselves. And again, going down, it doesn't end, it just wraps. So here's the, the effective end of my library and the, and the start of my library, and they just flow right in to each other. I don't wanna spend a lot of time in this video talking about like, oh, what, what, what do people want or what, what I might like to see. I might do a little, bit of, a little bit of that naturally, but I'm gonna to try to avoid that. But suffice to say, this is the way it works and there is no configuration for this. So I can't choose how many rows of movies. I can't choose different types of scrolls or fixed edges for my scrolls. This is the one type of presentation and the currently selected movie always effectively anchors into the middle. You can see the, the yellow border kind of jumps a little to the side or up and down, but it essentially fixes it back into that movie that's, that's being selected in the middle there. And as soon as I leave it on the movie for about a half a second or so, I get the little fly out, covers three of the movie covers over to the left of that movie but it gives me the title and it gives me the first sentence, right? Or a little bit of the um, synopsis essentially. So if I hit essentially okay or, or enter on a given film, here's where we start getting into the cards. A lot of very text-based pop-up style cards. The title there is at the top, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. I see a synopsis with some details like the running time, the 4K HDR support, the aspect ratio, the, the year the movie was made and so on. I see a short synopsis. Genre, uh, movie genres assigned within the Kaleidoscape metadata, cast, directors, and so on. We're not seeing pictures. Again, text heavy, card heavy style 
type of UI. If I hit return, I go back to the movie wall. Let's go back in. And so I've got a list of options here down on that bottom left-hand corner. Of course, I can play the movie and we'll take a look at the player and the interface to that in a second. I have the ability to access the scenes. Quite honestly, this is one of the coolest parts of Kaleidoscape as a system, particularly if you want to kind of demo your system or you're just chilling out in your theater and you want to kind of jump into some things or test some things out or or just you know just experience some really kind of key moments of the movie. Kaleidoscape in their creation of the metadata for all of the, the films in the, in the system or almost all the films in the system creates these basically like bookmark scenes. They give them a name. The numbers on the right are basically the runtime of that scene. So for a given movie, you can pretty much expect or assume that most of them are going to have scenes and that overall Kaleidoscape does a really good job of selecting like good scenes to bookmark. So if there's a really key moment of a movie, a really interesting uh, section of a film related to like audio, video, performance, or, or whatever it might be, it's going to be very key to get a scene. And, and the movies that have them generally have a handful or, or several. And once you start playback of a scene, the scene can finish, you can come right back out, or you can like keep playing the movie. Um, a lot of Kaleidoscape content does have extras, and if the extras were available and downloaded for a given film, this is where you would see them. Again, it would be just a text list. I don't actually have any extras for any movies. I don't believe installed on my player right now. One of the one of the kind of limitations of extras with the system is that the extras are downloaded with the HD copy of the movie. I generally download the 4K HDR copy of the movie, and I don't additionally download the entire HD film just to get the extras. So something probably to talk about in a request type future video to decouple those extras from the HD copy. But in any sense, I, we, in our household, we don't tend to watch movie extras with Kaleidoscape. Um, Apple TV or, or, or something else is generally preferred. This Again, this would be kind of a text list of just the name of the extra. A lot of times that doesn't give you a lot of context to understand what it is, what the extra even is, or what you're going to, to see if you watch it. So, but it's there. Um, a good number of, a good quantity of content in the store has extras, but it, it's far from universal. We can see some details here, basically from the movie store, and I can jump to different elements of the metadata of the movie. For example, do I want to see what other movies that are in the store that this actor may have been involved with? Down to the store. Let's see what else Peter Ramsey has directed. So again, this is pulling from the store data, not my collection. You can actually see that the flyout is a little bit different. The flyout here actually contains a little more uh, metadata. We've got the Rotten Tomatoes information and, and such. I actually really did wish that they would have this available here as well. But we get a little more information in the store. Uh, another option here that we can do for our movies, we can add to a collection. We have uh, favorites and watch soon. This is customizable and we'll go into the collection section. Suffice to say though, I can check a movie on, you know, or off multiple collections into a single collection or multiple collections if I want, and then access those in another part of the UI. More options. Generally, there's really not a whole lot here. Um, you can remove scenes if you don't want them in the list. And do keep in mind that part of the coolness of the platform is that you can make your own scenes and you can actually make your own scripts, which are kind of multiple collections of scenes. And so anything that you made, of course, you, you then have the option to further remove. And then deleting the movie means removing the download of the movie from my local storage. It doesn't mean deleting the movie from my account or removing it permanently. If I delete the movie, it's just removing the local copy. I can always go back to my digital rights that I own uh, in the store with Kaleidoscape and download the movie again. That's all the options that we have here for a given film. There are a couple more complex items that could show up, but that gets into ideas of like disc to digital. And if you have some of the older Kaleidoscape hardware where you might've been able to catalog or, or you have a disc, certain uh, extra things might pop up like being able to redeem digital rights or putting in a disc and cataloging. I don't want to really get into that, and that's really legacy parts of the platform in general anyway. So now we're focusing here on 
the, strat the current model devices, the Strato C, the Terra, my Terra is a 12 terabyte, and kind of the functionalities and the features and stuff that you would expect to have access to in, again, in a current Kaleidoscape system and not so much of a legacy style system. Kind of the extent of the main interface, there's some limitation to it, of course, but there's also a sense of just kind of simplicity. And I, I would say like uh, maybe elegance, you know, the movies that you buy with Kaleidoscape are not just movies presented to you by whatever streaming service or, you know, whatever other app you might be using. You, you could assume that the things that you buy in Kaleidoscape are the movies that you care about, the movies that you want in your digital library. And sitting down in your theater, powering everything up, and just having this presented to you is so quick, so easy, so efficient, so elegant, and Again, direct access to the content that you cherish the most, right? It's kind of like the marketing line of the platform, but it is legitimate. There's a difference, touch and feel and presentation, right? Using this UI versus firing up a Roku or an Apple TV and getting in and out of disparate apps and, and that sort of thing. It is what it is. I should mention as well that we can shuffle this UI. I talked about this a little bit in my settings video as well, that you have a choice basically to have the UI kind of auto shuffle or have the UI be in the alphabetical default state using the Kaleidoscape apps and the controls and, and such that are available. Even if you have the alphabetical format chosen in your settings, you still are able to force a shuffle by, by on demand with the, the shuffle buttons, the shuffle commands essentially in the system. Um, I leave my Kaleidoscape in the alphabetical order. I prefer that, but if you want to, again, the shuffle option is there. So if I go to Star Wars A New Hope and I shuffle, notice how we're surrounded predominantly by the other Star Wars films right, that are available. So a neat element of the system, not something that I say that I particularly use all of that much, um, or maybe hard, hardly much at all. I do prefer the alphabetizing uh, alphabetized structure for my movie wall in my library. Um, I should also mention that what you see in the Kaleidoscape UI is only what is downloaded. And so I could I could make a whole other video and I probably will about the limitations of that, but suffice to say the way it works, you only see what's downloaded. I've got, I don't even know, something probably like 13, maybe even encroaching on 1400 movies in my Kaleidoscape digital library right now. I have a 12 terabyte Terra, which means even if I fill it up, I can only hold a little bit under 200 movies out of that library. So I have way, way, way more content than I can possibly keep in the platform, you know, locally in my system right now. And so what you see is what you can watch, what the system is downloaded and is storing uh, and available right now. Of course, the nice thing about the, the Terras, all of the Terras is if you have the internet speed to support them properly, you can download a 4K movie in about you know, eight to eight to 12-ish minutes. Fundamentally speaking, I can have most anything in my collection that I wanna watch, ready to watch by triggering a download and having that uh -uh, essentially on demand. So if I back out to the menus, so I apologize for the glare, it's sunny now and you're gonna get a little bit of glare on the, on the black sections of the screen, but we are in the first blade, the My Movies blade, and we're in the covers section of the My Movies Blade. So we can view our collection or what is currently downloaded to our system of our collection via covers. We can also view it as a list. And by default, this is an alphabetized list by the movie title, fly up to the top. And so you can see numerics come first. And then I, I like how they highlight the, the current alphabetized letter of the alphabet. So we see the Adams Family too, but it's an A title of course, because we don't count the the but the A is the key, key piece there. In this list view, basically kind of like this table view, we can see the genres that a given movie is allocated to, we can see its cast, and we can see its director. And if I scroll over to the right, we can further see the year it was made, its running time, its rating, and its currently downloaded quality, in which case most of these are HDR. There's been a lot of conjecture about this lately, Suffice it to say, in Kaleidoscape, if you see HDR, that means 4K HDR. There really is no HD HDR in the Kaleidoscape platform. You might see a tag that's just UHD, and what that means is 4K SDR. 
it's real the quality is really designated by the color space more than the the resolution now this list is a bit of a of a jump list or a sortable list you could say so if it mattered that while well, we really need a short movie i can sort by time and you can see it resorted the list it kept me on the title that i was currently on so if i scroll back up to the top now the shortest movies in my system or the shortest pieces of content these are a couple of documentaries of course would be at the top or if i sort by rating right basically this is grouping so my r movies are together my pg-13 movies are together and i can do this on any one of these columns uh, again, just making a grouping, making a sort, sorting by the director's name. If I sort by cast, it's going to take the first cast member. If I sort by genre, you can see how I can kind of jump through. Um, it, it's grouping again. It's grouping by the one that you're keying off of. And if I go back, I can sort back again by the titles. This is a pretty nice uh, ca capability. The, the, way that, the most powerful way that I use the list the most is this sort by time. Sometimes we go down for a family movie. We've got a limited amount of time. We don't want something over two hours. So sort the list of the stuff that we had downloaded to watch and, and let's make sure we pick something less than two hours. So if we take a look at collections, uh, we can see now in, in more recent actual versions of the KOS, they added some extra capability or some extra like default collections here in terms of I think the new maybe and the played new populating automatically based on like the most recently downloaded movies the most recently downloaded movies at the top you can see and it tells you here added to library april 15th april 11th and so on that was just when i happened to trigger the download of that movie probably from the web page when I, I i bought it the the new list goes pretty deep paused shows you movies that are in progress meaning you started their playback and you didn't finish the movie you stopped it you you exited out and so you can basically um, resume or have the option to resume the movie where you left off. A couple of these I was watching, of course, for some demo purposes. Uh, played shows you a collection of, of what you've watched completely kind of through the end in a similar format to the new list. So you can see the last couple of movies that we watched. Again, this is new, a, a newer element of the firmware. So we've watched more movies than this on these Kaleidoscape players. I think this is just what we've watched since the firmware that had these collections kind of went went live. We watched Ron's Gone Wrong on April 13th, and we must have finished it up at 8.58 p.m. Same to Adam's Family. And then the songs kind of gives you a collection of uh, musicals, right? That, that one is there by default as well. I, didn't, I did not make that one. And so again, going back into the, the UIs in a given movie, I can make custom collections, I can add movies to collections, different entries and customize it as much as I want. The thing to keep in mind is that I, as far as I understand it, when you make collections of movies, you're, you're making collections of movies that are installed on the device. You can't like necessarily do it from the web page, or you can't kind of pre-build collections from your library. You build collections from what's downloaded. And I think that's a little bit of a limitation. Last thing here we have is a search. So I can search for Star Wars done. And I get a, a, a result here, movies with titles matching back into search. Let's search for something that I don't have all of them because I haven't bought the latest Matrix. No results for the Matrix. Keep in mind here, again, we are searching the movies downloaded to the system right now. You're not searching your whole library and you're not searching the store. There's a different part of the UI for that. And again, I really wish, I, I don't want to get too far into this, but I really wish that there was a way to see my whole library here. Everything that I own, not what is just downloaded. And give me some indicators for what's, what's downloaded versus what's not. The second tab, tab over here is the movie store. And so here you can see it's, it's a variety of kind of horizontal uh, jump lists and such. I can, I, there's a search option here under the featured row. New release movies in a view all. There's the ability to jump into different genre sections, television, family movie night, action adventure, musicals, recommendations, and so on. So this list goes through a whole bunch of different types of, of recommendations and ways to find things, categorizations of films and all of that. And we start on the featured row, still see a line for my movies, 
Movies with offers are presented here. So in this case, for example, I owned The Godfather and I owned The Godfather in high definition. It was recently upgraded to 4K HDR and for a reduced price of $4.99 through a digital offer, I can upgrade my rights to that movie. I've got quite, I've got not quite a few, but I've got a few of these in here that have been upgraded that I haven't paid to upgrade yet. And so you can see there's the wrap to the bottom of all of the other different types of categories and stuff. So if I go into a view all here on like new released movies, you can see this very, so as you can see, it's again, it's basically the movie wall. We get a little more information on the flyout card, some details, some ratings, and actually a price if we wanted to buy it. I can shuffle in here as well. If I'm kind of just browsing for certain movies and if I go back, I do also have the ability to search the store. Full access there. And let's just go ahead and pull up the card of a given movie. You can see this does, it, it's the same information, but it's formatted differently. I quite honestly find this to be the superior formatting. And I really wish they would bring the store card to the library section. I like how they put the boxes around the fact that the rating, the runtime, the aspect ratio, the year it was made, rather than just having all of that text lumped together at the top. I like the icons and the tags. I like seeing the common sense media rating and the Rotten Tomatoes audience and reviewer scores and, and all of that. If I go down the list, it's very similar to the movie library cards, but uh, with some minor differences. Obviously here I have the ability to purchase this movie and I could do so right on the device and trigger the download. I can explore related movies and other movies by the same director and the same cast. I get a list. This movie does have extras, so you can see what this kind of looks like. I guess they do separate, in this case, like special features from deleted scenes. Life of a Shot, Build Your Own Boy Band, Animation. What are those? We don't know. There's not a whole lot of context here. So you can watch extras, but you don't have a lot of detail about what you might actually be watching. Scenes, audio tracks. So you don't really see this in the library view because in the library view, you've already kind of predetermined what, what you're downloading, what version of the movie and, and so on. But here you can kind of get the whole list and subtitles um, as well in terms of what's available for that given film. So that's the movie store. Again, here's the search. If Now if I were to run a search in the store for Matrix, I'm gonna see those, I'm gonna see those films. Same kind of search results. Notice that the first three films there have that yellowish uh, triangle uh, mark in the corner with a check. That means I own that film. And the yellow means that I own it in 4K, 4K UHD, HDR. As you can see on the bottom, it says owned in 4K HDR. If, if it was an HD movie, or actually we have it right here, Animatrix, it's a blue triangle with a checkbox. That means the movie is in HD and I own the movie in HD, or here what they call Blu-ray quality, high definition. But very similar feel, very similar interface and, and behavior, again, to what's in the uh, what's in the My Movies in the Library section. So I'm not gonna go into details on parental control. I talked about that in the settings and configuration video a bit, as well as what's available on the systems tab in terms of status and all of the disparate settings. Check out that other video if you want a deep dive with regards to that. So one thing to look at here, let's go ahead and open a movie and you know let's go ahead and play a scene, taking down the ad at. Of course, when Luke, Luke is gonna trip up the the ATAT -AT Walker on Hoth. Spoilers. A couple seconds to get going here. I'm going to go ahead and mute it. I don't want any takedowns, and I'm sorry, but I'm probably also going to have to put a bit of a black cover uh, over the film itself. I just So in terms of the UI, you saw the movie started nice and easy that quick. Started right at the beginning of this scene. This, scene's la this scene lasts about a minute. And in terms of playback controls, of course, I have all my usual transports. I can pause. And notice in the upper right hand corner there, I have an indication that the movie is paused. And when I play, we see the, the play card hit and then go away. I'm going to go ahead and hit this info button. And this allows me to pull up some kind of quick navigational elements of the movie. I see status, Star Wars Episode 4, the name of the film, the name of the scene that we're in, and an indicator showing, yeah, 20 seconds left in the scene. I have the ability to access the different audio tracks that are currently downloaded and switch between them. 
course, this movie has a Dolby True HD Atmos audio track, and that's it's going to select that that best audio uh, option by default, but I can switch to a regular Dolby Digital or some other options there if I so chose. Uh, subtitles, um, in this case, I'm not using any subtitles, but there are subtitles uh, in this case for English with deaf and hard of hearing, as well as just the regular text um, English subtitles. I can jump into extra scenes or, or I can jump into other scenes directly from here. I can access the extras. I don't have extras for this movie. Again, extras come with the HD quality download. I've only downloaded the 4K HDR version of Star Wars Empire Strikes Back, so I don't have the extras. So here's where you can get into the options to make scenes and do that. I'm not going to do that in this video. I will make a separate video more involved with regards to scenes and scripts. I just don't want this to take an hour. Um, I have some other options like the ability to jump jump to a given chapter. So if I wanted to say jump to chapter five, I could do that. And again, you can see kind of how quick it is. The Strato C player is accessing the movie file over the network off the hard drive. Everything is fast. Everything is quick, nice and zippy. You don't have to deal with disk menus and limitations and warnings and, and all of that. One other thing I want to mention that's kind of cool is they recently, in the control system commands for the Kaleidoscape, they did allow the ability to do a, a replay or a jump back. So if I hit the replay button, we'll see here, I'll go back. The one thing it doesn't do, it doesn't automatically turn the subtitles on. That would be nice. I think in a lot of cases you're jumping back because you missed what somebody said. But this is pretty cool. So it's basically, I, I want to say a I think it's about 15 seconds, give or take, in terms of a direct jump back. I'm doing that through the Control 4 interface. So there we just hit the end of the scene. It tells me, hey, you're at the end of the scene. So if I continue playing, I can just keep watching the movie past the scene. Or of course, if I stop, I'll go back to the menu. Back in here, so now that I, I watched the movie, I can pick up, it's, it's a considered a paused movie. I can resume it from where I left off. And I just wanted to show the fast forward and rewind. So there's one, two, three levels of fast forward. And I do see it skipping as we go. I can rewind as well. One, two, three levels of rewind. And when I'm not in a scene, just real quick, if I go into status, I get a little more status information not inside the scene. So I can see I'm now in chapter 15 of 50 for the movie, and I have roughly an hour and 37 minutes left. So I should mention one of the things that I'm not aware of when it comes to the playback and the transport controls is if there is a mechanism for like a frame by frame advance or a skip. Um, I, I don't believe you can do that. I've tried a couple different combinations on the remote or at least using what's available through my Control 4 Neo and looking at the apps and such and, and I, I've not found a frame by frame nor have I found a uh, type of slow motion. You don't really have those here. Another kind of common one that you see on like Blu-ray players is like the AB repeat, kind of quick buttons and such. There's not really a facility to do that, at least that I'm aware of. Although if you really wanted to repeat the same moments of a movie over and over and have access to those again, you could make a custom scene to do that. So that is a overview of the library, interface, store, and playback elements of a Kaleidoscape platform using my Strato C and Terra 12 terabyte working here on my Sony 85 inch X900H. If you have questions, please ask in the comments. I'm gonna be breaking down other elements of the Kaleidoscape platform coming up, like the mobile app, the web page, and talking more and more about how I use this thing and, and, and what elements I use and what I like and what I think could be improved. I, I think it's really a great movie player and platform overall the quality and the usability and the convenience is of course uh, just just aces i really like it and i use it very very frequently in our theater pretty much the main at this moment the main movie watching uh, interface of our theater room let me know what you think do you have a cloud escape do you love it what do you like are you thinking about it what do you want to know sound off in the comments Keep an eye out for some future Kaleidoscape videos. Thanks so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Look down in the description below for some ways to support the channel. And if you're thinking about a Kaleidoscape, I do have a referral code down there. Give it to your dealer. 
use it. I could get a couple of free movies. I won't turn those down, add to the collection. Thanks so much and check back soon and look for other great Kaleidoscape content on the channel.